Hello, today I'll talk about installing uh, Kubeflow on macOS. I think for machine learning engineer it is essential to be able to uh, install and run uh, Kubeflow locally because it allows to test the platform better and understand uh, how it works. Uh, afterwards you could run it of course on cloud, Google or Amazon, but uh, I think in, in general it's essential to be able to run it on, on premise. Uh, my path of, of installing Kubeflow was uh, not so smooth. Uh, I spent some time uh, to see and test different options, but at the end, uh, luckily, I think it worked out great and uh, now it works uh, perfectly. And I would like to share my experiences and hopefully, uh, maybe it will save some time, uh, someone some, some time in, in, in configuring Kubeflow and so it will be useful. So let's uh, switch to uh, the browser and first of all let's go through uh, documentation so uh, this uh, workstation installation installation section over there and uh, if you are like me installing it on uh, macOS you would go to kubeflow on macOS section and uh, there are multiple options available like uh, micro k8s uh, mini kf mini cube multipass so uh, one, two, uh, three, four options are listed uh, for Kubeflow installation on your own workstation. Uh, first of all, I, I tried with uh, Micro K uh, 8S because uh, it looked um, uh, it looked like uh, the, the way to go because uh, it it runs on Multipass, uh, which is essentially uh, Ubuntu Linux instance running on your computer. And I thought it would be nice if uh, Kubeflow would run for that separate instance, so I could uh, anytime uh, stop it, uh, drop it, or recreate. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to uh, complete the configuration. Uh, installation was successful, but I was not able to uh, correctly set up a tunnel, SSH tunnel, from my host to to the virtual machine, uh, even by following the instructions. So there were some errors and so on. Uh, then I tried another option uh, to install Micro K8S uh, uh, directly on, on computer without using Multipass. And on the last step it failed, it was not able to install uh, Kubeflow. Uh, it complained about uh, uh, root user and so on. And I, I read on forums that there is a bug uh, installing Micro, K8, uh, Micro K8S with Kubeflow on local um, uh, MacBook computer without a virtual machine. So I decided to uh, leave this instead of trying to find the workarounds. And then I checked the um, uh, Mini KF and Mini Cube. And uh, the option with Mini KF looked uh, the, the most promising for me. And especially because if you go to Mini KF documentation, they mentioned that this is production ready for fledged and uh, local Kubeflow deployment that installs in minutes. So that sounded promising. So then I went and installed uh, uh, Vagrant and uh, Oracle VirtualBox and on top of that uh, luckily uh, quite fast and in quite, it was quite simple to install Kubeflow. So probably I should start with this option first instead of um, uh, Micro, Micro K8S but on, on the other hand uh, now I'm able to compare uh, both approaches and I would tell you that uh, with, uh, if you would go with Mini KF it's uh, way easier uh, to start up Kubeflow and it's easier to stop it and start it. It stops and starts faster than uh, based on my tests uh, comparing to uh, another option I mentioned. Uh, you, you, uh, Kubeflow, uh, it's a cloud product and if you run it locally, it needs some uh, quite a lot of resources. So you need at least 12 gigabytes of RAM, uh, two CPUs at least, and uh, 50 gig gigabytes of disk space. Luckily, my macOS uh, got 64 gigabytes of RAM, so I'm able to run uh, Kubeflow without the issues. But probably if you would um, uh, want to install Kubeflow on-premise, uh, you would need to have separate server instance where you would uh, do all the setup with the Kubernetes and you would install Kubeflow, Kubeflow and run it from there. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, I installed uh, Vagrant, VirtualBox, and then uh, the rest of the process was quite straightforward. I actually uh, executed uh, command Vagrant init uh, to mini kf to get the image. And then I executed Vagrant up, up to create the image uh, locally with um, uh, all this support for Minikube. And then you go to 
uh, to the browser and from there you provision your instance and you, it, it all uh, gets up and running for you. So if uh, I'll go through uh, the way from the history of my uh, uh, commands, the, the ones that I was executing, so first um, I was running vagrant ini init adicto mini kf and you get uh, the image uh, set up on your machine then you get uh, to run vagrant up this uh, this, this is uh, this one is uh, actually uh, getting image up and running and in my case it's uh, mentioned that uh, persistent storage uh, plugin was missing it installed it and it said that uh, you need to run uh, Vagrant up command again after this plugin was installed. So that's fine. So I executed Vagrant up again, and uh, in this time, uh, image started and it was created all fine. Uh, VM was booted. Okay, and at the end, it said that you need to go to this um, uh, host uh, to the web environment from where you could provision a Kubeflow instance. Okay, and then I just went in my browser uh, and uh, I have it running right now as well. And it's already provisioned. And as soon as it is provisioned, you get a button uh, enabled for uh, to connect to Kubeflow. So you can just click on that button and you get to the uh, Kubeflow central dashboard. And this is where uh, all the environment is running. Okay, and this is an option also you could um, uh, get information about uh, your, uh, your Kubeflow environment from the command line. Uh, you get instructions here below and you need to download um, Kubeflow configuration file and then set up the, the um, uh, environment variable pointing to that file and you could, uh, through uh, Kubernetes uh, controller utility, you could uh, execute it and, and, and you could get information about all the ports that uh, being initialized to run the kubeflow so for example in my case if i execute um, kubeflow get post command from kubernetes uh, controller i get uh, information about all the pods running and yeah it seems operational and it's quite easy to um, uh, for example, to, to stop this VM if you don't want to uh, if you don't want to work it anymore and you would like to continue tomorrow, you don't need to destroy it uh, and create it again from scratch. You just uh, run a ground suspend. Uh, so this would uh, create a snapshot of the current state of virtual machine which runs uh, uh, Kubeflow, and afterwards you could do resume. So it just uh, would restore the state. And it's uh, typically it's quite fast. So let's see. Uh, yeah, it should executes uh, save state and uh, executes um, suspending execution uh, task. So it should uh, should be able to save the state. And let's see. Okay, it's actually saved the state, so now VM is down. And if I would go to activity monitoring, I would see that there's no uh, process running anymore for uh, not consuming any memory for for the VM. Okay. Okay, and now if I would run resume. Uh, it says that VM is resuming, okay, and we see that the process uh, that it's, it's related to uh, VirtualBox machine is uh, up and it, it gets uh, memory assigned. So it's probably uh, around uh, 20 gigabytes will be assigned to that process when VM will be up. Okay, it's 11. 12, 14, and in, in a few seconds to be up. Okay, it's went to booting VM process and uh, it, tell, it says that um, it's the environment. Okay, it's up. So it's to around 20 gigabytes of RAM is being used to uh, run this VM with Kubeflow. 
Now if I go to uh, to the host which controls uh, mini kf instance I see that kubeflow is operational and I can open the dashboard okay so thanks for watching and hopefully uh, this will be useful for someone who would uh, look how to install kubeflow on premise on mac and uh, my point is that uh, I would recommend to use uh, mini kf as your first option so thanks uh, for watching and enjoy holidays. Uh, see you next time. Bye.